Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you are in the country today. Um, we are really pleased to have back with us on this uh, forum on this Tuesday, uh, Karen Witt, who is the Vice President for the Heartling Group, um, and uh, our wonderful clients, the Shore Club and the Palms. They also, of course, own and uh, manage the, the Sands in Turks and Caicos. In Chicago, we have Ling Riley, who many of you know, of course, it's Ling, and Ling's assistant, Claudia, who is sitting in Florida where it's raining and uh, has been all weekend, <laughs> but it's a little dark there. So um, we're really happy to be able to have you all with us, and thanks for joining. Um, hope you had a great holiday weekend. Karen has um, some great news and updates for us. For those of you who may have attended her previous um, webinar it was uh, I have to say one of the best that we've ever done and she does an amazing job of, of updating um, the situation not only with her hotels but on the island and as the president-elect of the Caribbean uh, 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 Hotel Association she is um, is a very privy to some of information about all the islands in the Caribbean so we're gonna hand it over to Karen and she's going to get us started. Okay, thanks so much, Brad and Giuseppe. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. I hope you had a great holiday weekend. I know I did. It was also a holiday here in Turks and Caicos. Yesterday was our National Heroes Day, so we were also celebrating uh, a little bit on the island. So, um, as Brad said uh, last time, I don't know how many new people we have today versus who heard the presentation before. So I'm basically doing a similar presentation today. So if you heard it before, um, we're just gonna reiterate some of the things that we're doing on a hotel level uh, to get ready for the, the opening. Um, and for the new ones, we'll have some additional updates and so forth. So just a quick update for the island to kind of get it started. Uh, at one point, and I think at the time that we did our last webinar, we were very hopeful for something around June 1st uh, opening. We now know that that's not going to happen. We are again now anxiously awaiting the messaging from our premier and our governor to let us know when the borders will reopen. Um, today, I do know that they have a meeting in Grand Turk, our cabinet meeting, and that's where those decisions are ratified. So we're just very anxious sitting on pins and needles in the next day or so we may have an answer on when the borders will open. We're optimistic about July 1st, but I don't want to make the formal announcement of that until we get the word from the government, because that's where um, the final decision lays. I can tell you that there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, both from Heartwing Group and the rest of my colleagues here in Turks and Caicos. We've worked together um, to assemble what we're calling a TCI safe protocols and standards for reopening on the island. And these actually cover hospitality sector, transportation, retail, restaurants, and so forth. So we're all working through the hotel association as a team to try and streamline some of those protocols that are going to be very important to instill confidence and ensure that you know the destination remains safe. Uh, we have been in lockdown for about 60 days now. We've had 12 cases. Uh, no new cases in several weeks. So we're at a point where we're almost ready to say that the island is completely COVID free. Um, we're just waiting on the health professionals to, to make that final announcement. We also work very closely with the World Health Organization and CARFA, which is a Caribbean arm of the World Health Organization. And that's where we're being guided on some of these standards some of the procedures, even some of the resources, equipment and chemicals that we're now in, employing in all the resorts, um, we're just guided by uh, the WHO and all the different organizations uh, in their standards and their protocols. So it's been a great exercise. We're doing training. Um, on May 4th, we were actually able to meet in small groups we can no no more than 10 persons and so we are coming together in our ballrooms obviously observing all the social distancing but we're doing the training in all the departments for all the new protocols and kind of what i want to do today is give you a little snapshot of that of what's going on because it is rather intense our document is about 70 pages of our new 
standards and procedures. And this covers everything from the minute, the arrival process, all the way to the bond farewell. So we're making sure that every step of the way, we're touching all those bases and, and um, addressing all the potential issues that a consumer may have. Um, Taryn, I want to just I, jump in one second here and just yes. remind people that please ask questions. You can do so sure. by um, raising your hand um, or, or using the question mark and typing in the questions for us. Um, the more engagement we have, the better. Um, we, and we'd love to hear from you. I know there's a lot of questions out there that you have from your clients, so please share those. Sorry. And that's a really that's a really good point, Brad. I hope we do get some engagement today because the thing about it is I'm giving you a snapshot. I'm giving you a glimpse today of some of the efforts that are going on behind the scenes, but it, it would take me all day to go through all 70 pages. So if there's anything relevant or pertinent that you really want to know, just shout it out. Um, so what's new? To start with, no human contact. So we're a nation of huggers and handshakes and so forth. So for now, at least, uh, the hand over the heart will be that warm greeting that you receive on arrival and really throughout the duration of the stay. Because the last thing we want to do is make someone uncomfortable by, you know, reaching out your hand or, or so forth. So no more human contact uh, between guests. And even with our own staff, we're training our own staff to avoid touching each other, at least for now, until we get past this crisis. Breakfast, as you know, is included in our rate. Um, and traditionally, it's always been a buffet style service. It'll still be the same location, the same venue, and the same great breakfast, but no more buffet. We can't have any more self-serve uh, food items for now. So it'll all be a la carte. We will have a few action stations. You will still be able to walk up, order your omelet, um, prepare to order, but there'll be a screen in front of you and it'll be a very personalized exchange. No more self-service on the breakfast. In terms of the arrival procedures, we want to instill that confidence from the moment a guest arrives in our lobby. So to start with, the bellman will greet the taxi and as the bags are removed from the vehicle, they'll be sanitized right there before we even bring them into the lobby. Bellman, of course, will be wearing protective gear, masks, gloves, and so forth. So this way, whatever may have happened in the transfer and the potential exposure in the airports and so forth, we're gonna eliminate that by just a quick sanitizing. Um, no more cold towels uh, for now, again, because obvious reasons, we don't want people to feel uncomfortable. However, we've established something new for our resorts. We are actually going to be offering a sanitized hot towel. And we've done a little testing with this because everybody was like, oh my God, it's a hot environment. It's, you know, why would you give a hot towel when they're coming out of a, a potentially hot taxi? But the interesting thing about it as we did it, it's, it's actually more refreshing than you think, and it's sanitized. So we have a special chemical that we'll be using in the towels. So this is, again, another gesture to ensure, because COVID can't live in an environment above 115 degrees. So these towels will be heated above 115 degrees, sanitized, and then offered to you on arrival. Um, another cool thing about the arrival process, we're putting together an amenity package so that instead of having your pens and your notepads and your magazines in the room, with the potential that someone else has touched them, you will receive a brand new packet, a new pen, a new pad, new magazines, new in-room dining guides and so forth. So you'll feel confident that those are completely clean and safe for you to enjoy. Housekeeping probably has the most new standards and protocols of anyone. They are quite intense and we've been doing just constant training, 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 because what we want to ensure is that there's confidence in the room. We don't want anybody to go in the room and feel um, a little bit careful about touching certain things. So there's amazing new standards for the housekeepers. Obviously they'll be wearing protective gear, we don't want housekeepers cleaning rooms while guests are in the room unless requested. 
if somebody just for whatever reason doesn't want to come out of the room and they don't mind the housekeeper if they request it on arrival that's fine but this new standard will be that they're not allowed to enter a guest room if guests are in the room for obvious reasons um, rooms will be stocked with sanitizing wipes um, public areas will all hand sanitizer and wipes will be readily available everywhere the other thing that we're doing in the suite once you arrive we've created a preference card a guest preference card and there'll be a myriad of questions for you to tell us your preferences on cleaning standards on supplies will you want turn down service because some people are saying well you know i definitely want housekeeping in the morning but i definitely i maybe don't want them coming back again in the evening just to minimize the exposure so what we're going to try and do is curate that personal experience for every guest every family you can tell us what you want and then we'll try our very best to make sure that you're comfortable with all of that uh, for the common areas like the gym and and the kids camp going to be really mandatory to reserve your time and it's a simple process it's not meant to restrict by any stretch but we want to ensure at all times that there's no chance that there's too many people in the gym at the same time so all you have to do is call the desk I'd like to go at x time and we'll stagger that and if we see that there's a time that there's too many people we might say could you wait a half an hour could you come half hour earlier because we definitely don't want to penalize anybody but we also don't want to make anybody uncomfortable by having too many people the kids camp concept has changed all together only one family at a time would be allowed in kids camp so again that would have to be a reservation only basis first come first serve on the reservation so if you've got kids and you wanted to spend an hour or two in the club in the camp with the camp counselors that has to be a reservation because then we have to have time in between those reservations to properly clean and sanitize before we let the next group come back in lots of changes in the food and beverage still the same great amazing menus same great service but we are following cdc and who guidelines observing all the social distancing protocols and the tables will be spread out to the standard that they recommend we're also minimizing the number of reservations that we take in any given hour because we don't want to have too many people too many crowds and again this is all especially in the beginning and I assume what will happen in the world, not just here, is that we'll, we'll watch how things progress and evolve. And eventually we may loosen them a little bit as time goes on, but we would always be guided by the health professionals, all those international organizations that are making the recommendations. That's kind of our benchmark right now. Um, we won't be making those decisions on our own. Room service. So as you know, all of our resorts have these amazing large space suites you've got a beautiful kitchen beautiful accessories so we've gotten a lot of feedback that maybe some families want to come in and have family style delivered to the room they can serve it and fix it at their leisure whenever they're ready to eat they can do the other thing that we're enhancing the menus because generally speaking you your room service menu would not be the same menu that you have in your restaurant because you want people to go to the restaurant so you sort of have a little different a la carte menu in the room. We're swapping that concept around and we're offering a lot of the same menu items that you can get in the restaurant on the room service menu. So that way, if you're not comfortable coming down and being around other persons, you can do that. We will also be serving breakfast as an option in the room. What will happen is it won't be the full selection of um, what you would get in the dining room, which is really the same thing that we have on our buffets. It'll be a set sort of a la carte menu for the breakfast. But if you want that, we are gonna accommodate breakfast in the rooms. So as I said, we're doing a lot of staff training. It's just, it's going really well. I mean, I am so impressed and so pleased with our teams. Um, because they're just really anxious to get going. They want to get open. They want to start doing what they do best, serving the guests. So everybody has embraced this whole concept of training. Um, this is an example at the Palm, someone coming into the resort. We will be doing a uh, temperature test. We have the forehead thermometers. We'll be taking names um, and writing down recording temperatures. If somebody is above 
the temperature, there's a whole protocol of how that's handled before they enter the resort. No one will be able to come in if it exceeds that recommended temperature without some additional screening, without a doctor and so forth. So this is kind of a cool concept we've been practicing and practicing. That's actually Jeff Morgan, the general manager of the Palms. He's in the car <laughs> getting tested. So we've been doing a lot of role playing um, because we want the process to be smooth, easy, really friendly it's not going to be um you don't we don't want you to feel like you're coming into a clinical environment but we want you to feel safe so we're really practicing on a lot of these protocols so there you have paul telford he's the gm at the shore club he and anthony the hotel manager even you'll see on the screen there grooming and hygiene standards we are even really enhancing all of that for the staff because again i think if you the perception, the optics are very important. You wanna have clean, clean, clean all the way through. Um, and then on the right, you see some of the in-room training. They're actually learning how to put on the gloves properly, the mask and so forth and how those are handled. Cause that's really important. People don't think about that in terms of you have to wear the PPE, but it's also super important that you understand what to do and how to take them off and what to do when you take them off and so forth. For the fabrics in the room, the soft goods, and this is one of the questions that we keep getting over and over and over. And in the last webinar, someone asked me, and um, I did say that we were working on something very exciting. Well, now I have the answer. There's a new product called Decon 7, and it's actually a very light mist. It's a spray um, that actually eliminates any trace of the germ, the virus. So all of our soft goods, cushions on the sofas, the carpets, once a room is evacuated and, and departed, not only will it do the new cleaning standards, but then the final phase will be to spray the soft goods just to ensure that um, we mitigate any chance of anything remaining on those surfaces. The other thing about that is, is the rooms will be open so the first thing that happens when the room is, is departed, we open up all the doors, all the windows, let the fresh air through. And we also can't do any back-to-back -back reservations like we used to. So we need time in between each reservation to ensure that we can do a proper job on the cleaning. Every staff, every staff member, including myself, <laughs> um, has to pass the test. We're doing a certification test on COVID-19 standards and protocols and you have to pass the entire test for every department in other words if you're housekeeping you don't only pass the housekeeping segment you actually have to go through the entire range and pass this certification and then we're giving everybody a sort of a little certificate to show that they have actually gone through the training again in the kitchen new standards um, we're doing carry out service right now because that did open up on the island on May 11th. We were able to provide um, carryout service. So at the Palms, they're doing this, but again, it's with the new gloves, the mask, and even new standards for cleaning um, the equipment and so forth. This is just a little footnote of something that I wanted to share, um, just to demonstrate how special Turks and Caicos really is. And we as a community work so, so hard together. The TCHTA has put together what they're calling a Staples Mission. And this is where every business in the, in the country, resorts especially, but other businesses as well, have the opportunity to buy staple boxes for your staff. And these boxes are, we were able through our purchasing power to get these at a severely discounted rate. In other words, a hundred dollar box would cost you $225 if you just went to the store and bought it. So what we're doing, the businesses are purchasing the boxes and we are providing them to our teams because obviously um, COVID-19 has shut down the industry in Turks and Caicos and you have a lot of people that are not working right now and they're, they're great needs. So we just wanted to be sure that we're providing the most basic essential uh, staple food items, cleaning items, mask and so forth. Um, so with that, I'll wrap up and open up for questions now. Um, I do wanna thank you on behalf of all of us at Heartland Group and Lush. We really appreciate the time that you're spending with us today. This is not, um, 
you know, a promotional sales pitch. It's more just to say, we're here, we're working hard. We wanted to let you know what we're doing behind the scenes, getting ready. And um, we appreciate your friendship and your partnership so much. That's actually a scene from the Shore Club, a full moon, <laughs> which was a couple of months ago. If you've ever been to the Shore Club in Long Bay Beach, there's nothing more magical and chanting than the full moon. Um, over that water and that's our um, resort pool beach access and so forth so kind of a beautiful thing to to close out my presentation so now i'd love to open up for questions or comments lane claudia i don't know if you want to add anything brad giuseppe um just love to hear from everyone great lane do you want to say something oh no. we have to mute yourself um. <laughs> <laughs> you have some questions so there's a first question is, um, if Turks and Caicos opens the border on July 1st, the clients want to travel, what is the hurricane forecast for the islands in July um, as it is becoming the season? Yeah, um, we had to mention hurricanes. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not ready for hurricane season. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what the forecast is. We typically, I mean, hurricane season officially opens on June 1st. But we typically don't see any hurricane impact until later in the fall, if we're going to see it. I mean, we have had, uh, you know, a couple of little hits, but um, July, August are typically fabulous months to travel. Um, the weather is nice. It's hot. Um, the beach is sunny. And yeah, it's not that it, it, even the rain doesn't really start generally until later in the year. That's historically. Yeah. Now, again, anything that I say is prefaced by the fact that I'm not a meteorologist, so I'm not sure, but yeah, I think you're good in July. The question that I have about July, to be honest, um, beyond hurricane related, is that we're still waiting for um, the US government to, to tell us what the restrictions are, because there's all sort of, you know, rhetoric that we keep hearing that you know, will they open the borders without quarantine? Will they, will they, what's gonna happen? So we're still waiting to understand how that's gonna work. We have not yet gotten that final. And I think that's also part of the frustration in the whole region on what to do because we're getting mixed signals. We've had a call with the airlines the other day and some of them are saying, well, you know, the government is going to mandate a 14 day quarantine when you come back into US. Then the next airline says, no, they're not gonna do that. So we're waiting for the official word on that as well. Yeah, yeah. I know we, we've been watching the flights to see uh, when they're opening up so that we can get, get ourselves booked as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, I want you to come as soon as you can, yeah. Uh, uh, Karen, uh, regarding the airport transfers, I'm, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, that um, are, is each individual transfer private now? Uh, as such, prepared? yes, yeah, as such. So the taxis will only be allowed to transport one family at a time per uh, unit, whether it's a van or a car or a taxi or whatever. Um, and those will also be sanitized. There's going to be a sanitizing station at the airport. So after each transfer, the car will go back. They have to get their six point sanitized first before they can get back into the line to get the next guest. Yeah, okay, good. And is there a VIP arrival process? Um, we've always had that, that hasn't changed. Um, there still will be the VIP, um, there's two VIP services on the island. There's also the option for VIP transfers. Okay, okay. Um, so um well, we can't hear any background noise if yeah, you have any there but Karen, don't worry. It's, it's fine. Yeah. So um actually I think you covered everything very thoroughly this time. Uh and there were a lot <laughs> of um, um I've had so questions. much practice with this. Yeah. yeah, you had so so many questions last time and that I know. <laughs> you you've incorporated now into into your yeah. presentation and done so beautifully in, in 20 minutes. So um, I, I try really to remember. To you. Yeah, I try to I, remember all the questions. I would also yeah. just add that you know our reservations departments are open. We've never closed, albeit we've been working from home, Zoom, and so forth. But the reservations team are still working, so they're available to answer any questions. You can email. You can call. Um, you know, so that's flowing. We're still working very closely with all of our our wholesaler partners. 
um, those lines of communication have remained open and strong. So again, the, the magic question right now is the date, the time. And I can tell you all of our colleagues throughout the region are going through the same thing that we are. There's so much uncertainty, unpredictability about the future because there's so many variables. There's so many organizations between immigration, health organizations, airports, authorities, you know, and then all your local governments. Everybody is just waiting on some finality on these answers. And I think everybody has their benchmarks, like certain destinations say, if it's this, if it's this, you know, these are the benchmarks that we have to reach before we can open and feel confident in it. The CHTA, which is the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, is also lobbying and working together very strongly to try and establish some uh, normal standards throughout the region. This is a Caribbean CARES program that we've been working on for a while. Obviously, that's a little more difficult for everyone. So these will be a little more basic minimum standards that we're, we're proposing. And then each resort would obviously enhance with their own. But, um, you know, it's amazing because as I speak to my colleagues in the different um, countries, they're going through the exact same thing that we are. You know, I'm very close to St. Lucia and Jamaica and Barbados yeah. and Bahamas. And just pretty much every day we're all in a WhatsApp chat and it's the same kind of question swirling backwards and forwards, everybody waiting, waiting. St. Lucia had um, announced opening on June 1st and a lot of technical things happen and now they have to push it back to July, same way as us. Um, so yeah. Fingers crossed that we get some good news in the next couple of days after these cabinet meetings. I hope yeah. that they see July, but uh, Aaron, we certainly will keep you posted. Aaron, um, what about the uh, the private jets? Do they have do they uh, have uh, anything special? Are they allowed to fly in? They're still waiting for everything the same. Yeah, not yet. Our borders are closed. Period. So even residents have not been allowed to come back to the island. No one. Uh, has come onto the island. The only people that have come on this island in the last 60 days is 42 soldiers from the UK to come and help us with the lockdown and curfew. Aside from wow. that, no one has come back to the island, yeah. So you do have even some residents that are anxious to come. In terms of the private jets and the FBOs, we are lobbying to allow them to come in a little bit sooner. Um, and it is possible that we would get some good news on that prior to the international borders opening fully. Oh, it seems like we're losing the connection with Karen. Um, uh, we're just losing, want to add that. We're losing Karen? Yeah, she yeah, did, just froze a bit. We so just froze we from lost Karen. Her? Probably be back in a bit. Well, yeah. thankfully this was at the end of our webinar session. And <laughs> actually, thank you for your great comments. and. Um, uh, we have some great comments from some of you saying great intel and implementation. Thank you so much for sharing. And we appreciate Karen and Ling. I don't know if you want to uh, add anything else. Otherwise, well, uh, we actually managed to do this within the... Well, you know, Claudia and I are, are always here as well. So uh, we usually hear things as uh, as quickly as we, we can pass on to everybody. So if you guys have any issues or uh, questions about availabilities, uh, do feel free to give uh, Claudia and I a uh, shout, and we will try to get back to you as quickly as we can. And, and, we, and this is recorded, so we'll be sharing this um, recording to all of you and with a follow-up. Yeah, so definitely um, you will you will hear it all if you had any audio issues. Um, it will the full recording will be available as a follow-up, and also on our website you can find. All of uh, the recordings of all of the forums that we've done in the past. Um, and Karen's back with us. So I just want to mention one thing uh, while she's back and then we'll go. We have a lot of thank you notes, Karen. So um, uh -huh. I just want to say one of the things we're starting to do right now is move to a next phase of our forums and that is putting together some panels. And oh. um, Karen being the the um, president-elect of CHTA, I'm sure you could gather some great experts for us, whether GMs sure. on the island, some of the other CHTA uh, TA officers and um, so forth, um, airport authority people, airline people, etc. I have somebody who uh, from American who will be happy to join us too. So I think the panels can be interesting. Um, everybody gives a, 
two to three minute summary and then open up for for q a so we'll be we'll be reaching oh, out to absolutely. That. that's a great idea and i would love to put some names forward for that i Fun think we do have get. some really really great the people only, who would love to the only question i it was asked last time that nobody really addressed it this time maybe karen can address it uh for this for this group is uh, the spa how are we handling the spa all right yeah that's yeah. good and that was a question last time so the spa you know just by way of definition is more of a clinical space anyway the standards in our spa and in most spas because you're regulated are so high and it's all about cleanliness if you've ever had a massage you know that that therapist washes their hands at least 12 times like when you come in during they stop they change oils they wash they wash they're constantly cleaning and washing so in terms of the physical space of the spa it will now be under the same standards as the guest rooms the enhanced cleaning the new supplies the new chemicals the new procedures and so forth but it was already at such a level um, that we are pretty comfortable and confident with it the spa technicians are going through the same training the same protocol training that everybody's going through so they will technically understand what's happening in the restaurant, in the rooms, in the arrival process. And also the same protocols will be for their uh, space in terms of the arrival, the reception, the greeting, again, which was already quite special. What I would say about the spa, it's a, it's a personal choice. It's gonna come down to, do I really wanna go into this space you know, knowing that, I mean, there's no way around massage. And and I'll be honest with you, we looked at the idea of therapists wearing gloves. It doesn't make any sense. It just, for the types of treatments that we do and the protocols that we've established, it really makes no sense because those hands are probably more clean than what the gloves will even be. So we're not worried about that. It's just gonna be a personal choice. I mean, we've had a lot of people say, I'm going, I'm definitely going to the spa. I want to book the spa, you know, so mm -hmm. that's great. And we hope that they will take advantage of it. But again, spacing in the spa was already um, pretty much on par with what the new standards need to be because we never have crowded spaces in the spa and we never have back to back to back, you know, because you want to give therapists time to rest in between. So while they're resting, those rooms are being sanitized and, and prepared for the next guest. The other thing about the Palm Spa that's really cool is that we have so many treatment rooms. You know, we have 17 different spaces um, plus some specialty rooms. So we can do a lot in terms of spacing people out in the spa. Thanks, Lane, for yeah. reminding me about that. That's a great one. You could use, you could use your spa rooms as guest rooms almost. <laughs> <laughs> I would happily stay in there. Trust me, me I would too. love to be me in too. that. Yeah. So I just the uh, last thing I want to mention is that for those people who might want like an added layer of um, isolation, that the villas at the Shore Club are amazing. They're six bedrooms. Each one has a private pool. They're oceanfront, beachfront. I mean, they're a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to get a family together to reunite. Um, and even has like a mother-in-law suite, which is like a separate bedroom um, out by the pool. So um, I think it'd be great to put Giuseppe's mother in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great for that. And we're getting a lot of um, feedback on the big spaces, to be fair. And I think that's the first thing because people are more comfortable. Okay, give me my, you know, two bedroom, three bedroom unit or my villa kind of going to be a little bit not isolated, but you have private, secure yeah. space. That's that's really, you know, it's secluded to a degree. And again, we will be flexible. Like I said, when you check in now, you're going to have your preference card. We're going to try and understand what your preference is, because I'll be honest with you. Some people are some people are hypersensitive about all of this and some people are just not. And they're like, you know what? I want the full experience. Please don't make me feel like I'm coming to a hospital because I've been in this environment for you know, 60, 90 days, I want to get away from it. I want to be pampered. I want some, you know, rejuvenation. I want, I want to feel, you know, alive. So we're going to be prepared to offer either way, whatever they want. Wonderful. Uh, I, and I should mention, so sorry, no, just let me mention in closing, we do have festive space available. 
we have had some cancellations during festive and i think it's important that you know we do have some space some big spaces um, we do not have any villas but we do have some larger suites and larger units at both hotels so if you have some families that are interested in festive seven night minimum please do contact us and let us know. Um, those are on an individual basis as far as reservations. So go through Brad or Ling or just Claudia and let us know if you have a, an inquiry for festive. Perfect. Thank you so much for this update. Good to know. And we wish you the best of luck in the next few days, Karen. Please. Thank you. Us all informed. We look in forward touch, to hearing yeah. from okay. okay, thanks so much, Thank everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thanks.